Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some tips and commands in Civil 3D that are going to save you a ton of time. Before we jump in, I want to thank today's sponsor, Plex Earth, for supporting the channel and the video. You'll hear a little bit more about them later in the video, but for now, let's jump right into some Civil 3D tips and tricks. <laughs> All right, so jumping right in, I wanted to share a tip to crop down or shrink down surfaces that are a little bit too large for your drawing or project. This happens often when you're bringing in, say, LiDAR or large area surveys, and you only need a portion of the surface in order to create a quick and easy cropped version of that surface, aka cropping it down or shrinking it down to just the area you're interested in. You can use this command. So you're going to need to start out with a polygon of some sort. That would be a rectangle or just a simple polygon that's closed containing the area that you're interested in. So for this larger surface here, I've just drawn a quick polygon around an area that I may be interested in. This works for surfaces that are quite large. You can also use irregular shapes to crop these down. Now, simply going up to the ribbon up here under the Home tab, hitting the Surfaces dropdown, and choosing the Create Cropped Surface option is going to bring up the Crop Surface dialog box. This is gonna allow you to select an area, select a drawing if you'd like this surface exported to a new drawing, which can be super helpful if you're trying to, say, speed up or shrink down your drawings. Uh, creating a new one with an area of interest or say cropped surface is gonna make that a little bit easier. You can also specify an existing drawing, the new name and description. So we're gonna choose a uh, crop method and I'm gonna choose object, but you can also simply draw the area you'd like. I'm gonna choose object and choose that polygon or rectangle we already made. Hitting enter, you can choose an area in the side that you want to crop. So basically this is telling it if you want to crop in or out of this box. I want to crop inside. So as I mentioned you have a few options here to create your new surface. You can specify an existing drawing you'd like to put it into. This has to be a different drawing than the one you're currently in but you could add it to a previously created drawing. You can hit this drop down. You can create a new drawing or you can select an already open drawing. We're going to choose create a new drawing and it's going to ask you for the path. So now we can select our new drawing. So creating a new drawing, we're gonna hit the three ellipses and you need to select a template to use for your new drawing. I'm gonna use the standard metric template here and hit open. You can see I've got a new drawing opening in the background there, drawing one. We can, we can change the name of that when we're finished here. You can choose the new surface name. We're gonna call it surface example B, and then I'm going to put a dash in AOI for area of interest because this is all we're interested in in this example. You can give it a description, something as simple as cropped surface, or a description ideally of where this data came from, whether it's a LIDAR or survey file. That's going to help you later on when you go back to see where this came from. You can give it a style and a layer. I'm going to hit OK here and it's going to create my cropped surface and it's going to save it in this drawing one. You can see under surfaces here, my AOI is in here. We're going to zoom to this and now you can see I have really quickly a crop down surface that is only the area I'm interested in. This can be a huge time saver when you're looking to clean up your drawings and make things a little bit cleaner and smaller if you're working with large data sets and surfaces. Today's video is sponsored by Plex Earth. I've talked about Plex Earth a few times on the channel before, but if you're not familiar with it, Plex Earth is an AutoCAD and Civil 3D plugin that helps bring additional data and visualization to your project, including imagery, surface data, and integration with Google Earth. You can easily download and install the plugin on their website and unlock up-to-date imagery, terrain, and visualization options instantly. In particular, Plex Earth brings terrain and surface data to AutoCAD and enhances it in Civil 3D. If you've ever needed contour or terrain data for a project design, Plex Earth is a perfect fit. 
It allows you to simply import terrain data from Google Earth along with other providers and generate contours automatically. By either using the current drawing view or specifying a specific area and grid density, you can then import elevation points and start designing right away, allowing you to get started on a concept or design before you've even been to site, saving time and money in the process. Even if you don't need the surface or terrain data for your specific design, it can create a high quality and visually impressive background for drawings and site plans. Another great feature of Plex Earth is the ability to order a custom drone flight directly from within the app for practically anywhere in the world. They will handle the planning, permits, and equipment for you, providing you with fully processed data down to centimeter resolution for an area of your choosing. If you'd like to learn more and try out Plex Earth, find the link in the description below. And if you're one of the first five people to click the special offer link below, you can get two months of Plex Earth Pro subscription completely free as a special promotion for CAD Intentions viewers. I want to thank Plex Earth once again for sponsoring today's video, and I honestly think you guys should check them out. I use them daily in my workflow. We're going to jump into the next tip, which is the paste surface. Uh, paste surface is a surface created by pasting multiple surfaces into that surface. It's going to combine two surfaces into one. This can be super helpful when you're combining, say, an original ground or EG surface like this one here in the background and adding a design surface or proposed surface to it. This is going to give you a final grade or FG surface or a paste surface, however you'd like to call it. But this is going to tell you and show you what your final surface or finished ground is going to look like. Now, in our case here, we're going to combine our uh, feature line graded pond here along with our EG or example uh, original ground. So we're going to right click on surfaces and create a surface. From here, you can give your new surface a name. As I mentioned, I like to call these either PS for paste surface or say in FG for finished ground. We're going to do FG and then you can put a bit of a description in the title here. I'm going to do FG and I'm going to call it EG and design pond. Now you can change your style here or you can hit OK if you're happy with that. Again, I like to add descriptions typically describing what this surface is so that someone else coming into your drawing is going to know what they're working with. Now expanding our FG surface here and going to the definition, you can right click on edits and paste a surface. Now you're going to want to put the bottom or original surface first because each surface you paste on top is going to overwrite the area where that surface exists. So in our case, it's going to overwrite the existing ground with our design ground. So first you want your EG or original ground surface. You can see it's made a surface here with a different color uh, style contour. We're going to right click again on the edits and paste a second surface. This time we're going to paste our design surface or our pond there and hit OK. So now you can see that it's combined these two, so selecting it. So you can see our finished ground has our EG or existing ground and our design pond added to it. Now you have a finished ground surface and if we right click and choose object viewer here, you can see that they are both combined into one. All right, so for our next tip, we're going to take a look at how to quickly and easily copy Civil 3D styles from one drawing to another. This can be time consuming and kind of a pain. Uh, a lot of people don't even know how. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy trick to moving any style you'd like from one drawing to another. You can see here that we have an existing ground surface and I'm going to just open up my properties here and take a look at the different surface styles. Now in my grading example, I have a 0.5 meter and 2 meter interval contour uh, style and in this drawing I don't. If for some reason I'd like to copy styles I've created in any other drawing including a template over to my existing or current drawing, you can simply drag and drop these using the tool space to the left here and the settings tab. Now you can see the drawing I have open 
is shown at the top here. But if you change the drop down at the top to master view, this is now going to show all of the drawings you have open. Now the easiest way to copy these styles into your current drawing is to simply navigate to the style you'd like in the master view. So for our example, I want to go into my grading example drawing and grab the surface style under surface styles and I want to copy the 0.5 and 2 meter styles I've created in this drawing into my current surface drawing. So you can see how simple this is. You simply go to the drawing you'd like to copy from, find the style, whether it's a surface style or a point style, a profile style, you can simply navigate to it through this drop down menu and then simply select it by clicking and holding down and drag and drop it into the new drawing. You'll see here that it's quickly switched over to the other one because it's copied it into this drawing. I'm going to grab the second one as well, the design one, and drag and drop it in. And now when I select my surface, right click, choose surface properties, I can now change it to the 0.5 background option. Hitting OK is going to change up my style and it's going to match exactly to the styles I've created in any other drawing by simply dragging and dropping them into my current drawing. All right, so the next tip or command I wanted to share is how to import or export shape files as well as a handful of other different file types directly from within Civil 3D. Now the command you're going to be interested in is map export or map import, and these are going to help you and allow you to import and export map style files, typically from something like say GIS. So to start, we're going to export a border or extent of our uh, pond here. So I'm going to type in map export and it's going to pop up the export dialog box. Now from the export location dialog box you can hit the drop down and choose the specific uh, file you'd like to export. You can not only export shape files, you can also export a KML or a KMZ so that it will sync directly with Google Earth. So in our case, we're going to do both. So we're going to export a Google KML or KMZ file first, and I'm going to save that in a folder I've got here. I've just pasted the link to a file where I want to save these, and I'm just going to call it uh, design extent and hit OK. Now you're going to get a second dialog box here, and this is where you're going to choose what you'd like to export. To choose specific objects, you can choose to select manually and click this button here. It's going to ask you to select an object. I'm going to select this outer boundary we've got here of our pond and hit enter. And you can see down here I've got one object selected. The options tab is worth checking. You can choose to select and treat closed polylines as polygons, which you're typically going to want to do. You also want to make sure your coordinate system is set, and I'll show you that in the next tip here, uh, how to set and what that means in Civil 3D. Once you're happy with these settings, hitting OK is going to export that shapefile or KML, and in our case we've exported a KML. So you can see here we've got design extent.kml. Now if I double click that, it's going to open up in uh, Google Earth, which I've got on the second screen here. It's going to zoom right in and you're going to be able to see where this pond is being placed and you can see it's been designed in this open field area and it's going to give a quick and easy way to export things directly to Google Earth or to say a shape file. Now, if you'd like to go the other way, I'll show you how to do that as well here. All right, so you can see here, I've got a shape file of the same design extent. I use the same process, map export and chose shape file instead and exported the same line work. Now, if we go into our larger contour drawing here, I know that this design pond is going to land somewhere in here, but I'd like to say bring in a shape file to confirm it. To import that boundary, we're going to type in map import and hit enter. It's going to ask us where this file is located. You're also going to want to make sure to choose the right file type. In our case, we're looking to import an 
.shp shapefile. It's called Design Extent. We're going to double click on that and it's brought up a new dialog box. This is going to allow you to choose any of the settings you'd like to apply to this line work in your shapefile, whether that's to assign different data, change your coordinate system, decide which layer it's going on, as well as what to do with points. If you're bringing in a shapefile with points, you can assign them an AutoCAD point style. Checking this box is going to import polygons as closed polylines, which is typically what you're going to want, and we're going to hit OK. You can see that it's instantly brought in our boundary and it's placed it where it is in this kind of sloping field to the south of our survey. So that's a real quick trick to import and export shapefiles and KML along with a ton of other different map file types. All right, for the last tip here, I'm gonna show you quickly how to set and assign a coordinate system in a civil 3D drawing. This is gonna allow you to quickly and accurately import and export map features as well as say surfaces or imagery that needs to be referenced to an actual location in the world. Like say, bringing in imagery or terrain data for using our sponsor, Plex Earth. So, assign or set up your coordinate system in Civil 3D, you can simply type in CS assign, and that is coordinate system assign. The full command is map CS assign. Now under here, you're going to need to know which zone and coordinate system you're in in the world. You can typically look this up. In my case, I know my code or coordinate system is UTM NAD 83, and I know that code is UTM 83-10 for the specific zone that I'm in, and it's this one at the top. Double clicking on it or selecting it and choosing assign is going to set the coordinate system for you and now your coordinate system is set and going to allow you to accurately import and export geo reference data i hope you guys enjoyed today's quick tips if you liked civil 3d tips and want to see more make sure you leave a comment down below i've got a ton more to share with you all and i want to thank our sponsor plex earth for supporting today's video if you haven't already make sure you check them out at the link up above or down below to get a free two-month pro trial for signing up and using the special link down below. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good one and cheers.